I've been asked to share what I've learned of my 32 years of titles and tears with the Los Angeles Lakers. Some of you may not be Lakers fans or basketball fans or even sports fans, but the lessons I learned in my career can apply to anyone's life. I don't know how to pack 32 years into 60 minutes. But my goal today is to leave you with what my daughters call GV gems. I've seen firsthand <clears throat> life transform into lessons and lessons learned from life by some of the greatest champions, not only in their athletic prowess, but in their own personal lives as well. So my advice to you is to choose happiness now before you have to learn it the hard way like I did. This is not a talk about health or happiness. But happiness is a serious problem in the workplace. And each of you can change the energy of a workplace by simply answering, never better in my life when someone asks how you are. The question is, is can you make people around you better with your attitude and your energy? We're going to come back to this, the true story about health happiness, and courage. Truth be told, what I will miss the most is the camaraderie of the team and the silly things that people say at work. For instance, in the NBA, when a player gets hurt during a game, there's a 20 second timeout. I have to go out on the floor and figure out what to do with this guy. So it's thinking and acting quickly on your feet. So you need information. If you didn't see it, you have to ask them. Where did you get hurt? I had an athlete, I said, where did you get hurt? His response was, over there. <laughs> True story. I, I can't make these things up. Right. <clears throat> I had Shaq, who I love. Shaq played in the World Games in Athens. When he came back, they asked him if he went to the Parthenon. And his response was, I don't remember what clubs we went to. <laughs> Real. I'm sitting on the bus with Pat. We sat on the first seat of the bus, him on one side, me on the other. When Mr. Ferdinand Lou Alcindor, Kareem's father, gets on the bus, this was against the Riley rules. And the Riley rules were never violated. Much to my surprise, Pat said nothing and shook Mr. Alcindor's hand as he got on the bus. Pat's intuition told him that Kareem needed his father. This is what I learned. There's something to be said about bringing someone in the room that commands respect. He or she doesn't have to say anything. Just their appearance sends a message. For the Lakers, Kareem and his father was that inspiration. Because we talk about strengths and weaknesses. I see many players that come into the league as a rookie, and five years later they're doing the same things wrong. There's no improvement at all. Magic took a lot of criticism when he first came in the league. They said he couldn't shoot, so he improved his shot. Then they said he had no range, so he improved his three-point shot. He later put in the baby skyhook, which won us a championship. We used to talk about him like he was detergent, new and improved because he came back better every year. Better because he worked on his weaknesses. This is when I learned you must always stay current and relevant in whatever your occupation is. Winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. There's a controversial quote attributed to Vince Lombardi. He actually said, the will to win is everything. And it wasn't his quote to begin with. The quote came from a UCLA football coach uh, Henry Russell Sanders in about 1950. Bill Parcells also coined the phrase, there's winning and there's misery. <laughs> Ultimately, we compete and we want to win, but the success of our mission became more about having a positive attitude and whether you can make people around you better. So when you enter your workplace, if you have your health and the health of your loved ones and someone asks how you are, Say it loud and mean it. I've never been better in my life. And see how it changes 
the energy in your workplace. Carry it over to the rest of your life and see how people react. Some people will say, yeah, right, because they think you're being facetious. Other people will tell you that you made their day. Try it, adopt it, live it. You can never have enough talent, but it is the most overrated thing in life. The team had to rebuild after Magic's retirement. Most often in sports, the worst place to be is in the middle. The only way a team can improve is through trades, the draft, or free agency. If you're at the top, you have assets that you can trade. And you also have a good enough team that good free agents would want to come to to win. If you have a bad team, you finish at the bottom and you can draft. Those are assets. The worst place to be is in the middle. Because you're not bad enough to draft, you don't have good enough players to trade, and you're not good enough to attract any free agents to come and help you. So you are destined to mediocrity. You don't have to like your coach as a coach. And you don't have to respect your coach as a coach. And you don't even have to like your coach as a person or even respect your coach as a person. But what you must do is you must respect the position of coach. So as long as he's in that position, you need to do it the way he wants it done. That's what he's getting paid for, to make those decisions. And he will have to take the responsibility for the success or failure of those decisions. It shouldn't be any different for us. This is when I learned that I was paid to render an opinion. But if my boss disagreed with me and wanted to do it differently, then it became my job to prove that I was wrong and he was right. Because for us to be successful, we must all be on the same page. This is a characteristic of not only success, but long-term success. Not being on the same page will relegate you to mediocrity. When you rise above mediocrity, it becomes contagious. It spreads through your team and a level of pride to be a part of that team or organization comes forth. Sometimes you fight with your brothers and sisters or your mom and dad, but you never stop loving them. It can be the same in the workplace. It's hard to get along with everyone every day. I fought with Shaq all the time. He was like a big kid. One year he decided he wanted to go to the police academy. It's true. So he'd come into training room every day, throw me up against the wall and say, spread them. <laughs> they'd frisk me, okay? In the beginning it was fun, it was cute, right? It got old after a while. <laughs> so one day I was busy, I wasn't in the mood for it, and he's manhandling me, and as he reached across, across the front of my face, I bit him on the hand, okay? Which was my only defense, it's nothing I, I could do. His reaction was, he yelled, he's resisting arrest. <laughs> he, always, he only did this with an audience, like when the training room was full, you know. So he yelled, he's resisting an arrest, and he went to punch me. So I saw the punch coming, and I turned, and he, he caught me right in the back of the pelvis. I had to get two injections to walk. Cody Bryant was a talented player, but what if I told you as talented as he was, he was not the most talented. Why does Kobe have five rings and there's more talented players that have none? Kobe has the heart of a champion because he did more with less, and here's how he did it. He not only worked harder than anyone else, he worked with purpose. He was not only more competitive than, than anyone else, if he lost, he used it to come back stronger. He was mentally tougher than anyone else by telling himself, yes, I can. And lastly, he constantly put himself in a position to learn. He studied his profession until he became intellectually brilliant at it. At halftime, while his teammates were grabbing their phones and checking their emails, their texts and tweets, Kobe was reviewing film of the first half. As a result, he rose above his talent to the point that the characteristic that least contributed to his success was talent.
And that's when I learned that talent is the most overrated thing in life. Everyone here, everyone in this room is capable of extraordinary things. Some days you're not 100%. On those days, Coach Wooden would say, concentrate on what you can do, not what you can't do. Remove can't and won't from your lexicon and replace those words with can and will. will. So these are my GV gems. Make people around you better by spreading the secret to happiness. Two, be introspective and true to oneself and they will follow you. Three, laugh a little each day. Four, have a mission with short, medium, and long-term goals. Five, we learn more from our failures and our successes by taking responsibility and not repeating our mistakes. Six, leadership comes from a physical presence by someone from the top that commands respect. Seven, stay relevant by changing with the times. Eight, there should be four compliments for every one criticism. Nine, be like detergent. Come back new and improved every year. Ten, respect the position of boss. Eleven, surround yourself with talent but know what to do with it. Talent alone is overrated. Twelve, prevent panic by being prepared. Thirteen, never give up on your dreams. Fourteen, can't and won't are children's words. Replace them with can and will. Fifteen, the name on the front of your jersey is more important than the name on the back. Sacrifice yourself for the good of the whole. Sixteen, <coughs> find a road to go down without a hole in it. And finally, find a mentor. As I've gotten older, I've realized that our two most important commodities are water and time. We need water to stay alive, and time is irreplaceable. Once it's gone, you can't get it back. So you should choose wisely as to how you use both. Thank you for your time. I hope I was worth it.